Yo, yo, thank you so much for joining the Highest Point Podcast. This is for everyone, no matter where you're from, no matter what situation you're in, or how hard you had it, you know you deserve the best and willing to put in the work for progress. Yeah. Today, we're going to talk about mad different things like uh, the real estate, mm -hmm. you know, differences between brokers and investors. Right. Uh, we're going to have some insight on also, you know, being biracial, kind of some the journey that right. uh, a lot of people have being biracial. I got biracial family, so... But um, before we get directly into it, y'all know what time it is, man. Drop that intro. You are now tuned into the experience. Science Point Podcast. More than a pod, it's a lifestyle. Find out what's happening right now. Came from the bottom, still reaching the highest point. No, we won't pipe down. We are the truth. We are the cool. We are the culture. The highest point lifestyle. Let's go. You already know what time it is, baby. Yeah. We getting into it. Yes, sir. We getting into it today, man. I got the homie in here. Got the homie in here saying, Robert the Realtor. What's good? Realtor. Yeah. All of that. But, you know, I'm not going to talk about who he is. I'm going to let him talk to you guys about himself. So, can you go ahead and give the people a little I'm intro? I'm trying with you doing it, but, I mean, <laughs> if you need me to say, yo, what's good, everybody? Those who know me, they know me as Sin. Those who don't know me, they know me as Robert. You can go by either name. I respond to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just checking in today, man. I got a call from my brother. Yeah. He's doing some very positive things, man. Wanted to come on here and speak to the people, man. No doubt, man. Definitely appreciate you coming up here and joining us, man, because yeah, yeah. we all about pushing the culture forward and um, just talking about a whole lot of different things. And uh, I know that you've been doing in your real estate thing for some years. Now, how long you been in real estate? Uh, too long, but about <laughs> 11 years. 11 years. Yeah. Dang. Like, can you talk about your journey there a little bit? Like, what made you get into real estate? Well, like a lot of investors, at least, who go into the wholesaling, I will talk about that later. Uh -huh. they, they start with some courses. So my course that I started with was one late night we saw a Carlton Sheets course. It used uh -huh. to come on one of those infomercials. You get like 12 CDs for like a penny or something like that. Right. So I'm like, all right, cool. We'll, we'll buy into the course. It was my girlfriend at the time, now mm -hmm. my wife. We bought the course, never did anything with it. It mm -hmm. just sat there. But real estate, it was like, yo, you can buy houses for pennies on the dollar. I was interested in that idea, right. but didn't do anything with that course. A lot of people started with that same dude. Mm -hmm. Fast forward some time, I got a job, started working night times. At that job, I was able to listen to podcasts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. My wife was like, yo, you got to get out of this job. Let's find something for the daytime. Right. Brought back to the real estate. was like, yo, I, I won't do the investing. Let me go get my license. When I got my real estate license, while I got my license, I learned about this thing called wholesaling. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's like you're being a broker without having your license. Right. Just to give a quick synopsis of it. Mm -hmm. I said, yo, I like this way more than being a broker. <laughs> so I started doing that, still working the nighttime thing, but uh -huh. I just got more into the whole real estate thing, you know, listening to the podcast, watching YouTube videos, mm -hmm. not doing my job because I'm trying to learn this stuff. Right. And eventually, it just took off. Yeah, I mean, that's what's up, man. You're basically using your nine to five to invest in your your future, becoming a real estate. Yeah, broker. absolutely. Yeah, and that's that's hardcore, man. That's a lot of things that we gotta, you know, think about. You know, if we want to be owners, and you know, we all know that stuff is not gonna happen overnight, right? We need some type of, uh, you know, financials uh, support to be able to support our dreams. It's not gonna just fall in our laps, right? Right. Um. So you know, a lot of times we gotta sit back and plan, like, okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna put forth all my effort, of course, in this job and do what I gotta do. Of stack course. my paper, and then I'm gonna use these funds to kind of build what I really want to do. Yeah, it's funny you say it that way because mm -hmm. you say you know put a lot you, you're all into your job, and that's what you should do. That right. is not what I did. So you was but you was you were putting your all into learning how to get out of here. Right. <laughs> so, you know, like at my job, I started slacking. I, I was killing it when I first got there. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it was decent money. I mean, I have no college, anything like that, you know. Right. All high school. And we were making 20 something dollars an hour. Right, right. For chilling. I said, yo, this is great. Yeah, yeah. So at first I was putting my effort into it. But when I learned about real estate, I, I saw a bigger picture. I was like, okay, let's go for this. Was not putting my effort into it. I started closing real estate deals. And that's what ultimately led to me leaving that job. Right. By their force, so you know, had to get fired. You know oh, okay, I mean? okay. It was like, hey, bro, talk about it. You're really not doing your job at all, right? You know? Right. <laughs> and so we had to meet a certain quota. Mm -hmm. Um, we had to have a certain percentage. We got be, uh, paid off production. The quota was forty nine. Mm -hmm. I hit forty eight. I was like, hey, I'm close enough. Right. Y'all right. can work with me, right? the bare minimum. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yo, y'all can work with me, right? It's like, actually, no, we can't. You know, you've been slacking for the past couple of years because I was so involved in the real estate. I was like. 
this is where I want to be. Right. And, you know, I always live by this motto. I can't say always live, but I like the motto, you know, you never know what you can do until you have to do it. Right. Facts. So I always use my job as a safety net. I wasn't going hard with real estate because I had a job, you know. Right, right. They removed that safety net for me. You know, you were forced to go ahead and... Absolutely. Okay, well, that's all I got now. <laughs> you know? But thank goodness you weren't just slacking at work and not having some type of backup. Right. You know what I'm saying? Some of us tend to just be at work doing the bare minimum and not actually using that time for something else. And, and that's the problem. You yeah. Because yeah. they lose their job and have nothing else. Exactly. You know, and, and the worst time to start something is when you have nothing. Because now you're like, dang, now you got to start from the bottom up. Right. You know, which... So a lot of grinds do, but mm -hmm. if you already have something, bro, go ahead and start building another grind like we were right. talking about. Right, know? right. Yeah. Don't wait until you don't have this anymore exactly. to start this. Yeah, man, because this whole corporate world is fickle. Oh, yeah. Um, You know, that's why I like to try to do a lot of different things on the side as well, because I haven't seen, um, fortunately, I've been blessed to not been impacted by all the layoffs. But I haven't I done been through hundreds of people being laid off from the years of me mm -hmm. working in this one corporate job. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally... I'm sure over 500, 600 people have been laid off since I've been there. Crazy. You know, and this happens in many other different companies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, without having some type of uh, doing something else on the side, if something happens to me at my job, I know that, okay, now I'm going to just go super hard in whatever other side hustle that I got. Right, right, right. That's, that's, all, that's all my options I have right this now. This is what I have. I'd rather have, like, uh, one or two options than none. Yeah, you know yeah absolutely. I mean? You know, but a lot of people just wait until they lose that one option to go find something else. Right. But I think you need to start at least building up the base work absolutely. for that option, you know? Absolutely, man. That, that ace in the hole, that backup plan, we, we all need one because, man, it gets real out here and get real quick, especially in, like, the pandemic, how many people was impacted. What? You know, uh, I know that's another reason why some of the uh, layoffs happen. So, Oh, yeah, yeah. A great deal of them, you know, and, and people not wanting to go to work because they're scared of what's happening, you know? Right. And I don't blame them, you know, stay at the crib. Right, right. Absolutely. But at the same time, that's when you have to find something else to do. You know, a yeah. lot of people were at home. They were like, yo, what can I do? There were people who became YouTube stars who never even thought right. about even recording on YouTube. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know yeah. this one dude, he had to start cutting his hair at the house. He used to be a barber. He was like, yo, I got to start cutting my own hair. He just started recording himself doing that. Before mm -hmm. you know it, millions of followers. Right. Like, money coming in from YouTube now. Right. Which supplemented the money he lost from being a barber during the pandemic. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So That's sometimes real. you just got to use the skills you already have, but in a different way. Yeah. Yeah, just, just believe in yourself. And also, that's something he loved to do. He just started recording himself doing something that, you know. He was already doing. He was already doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and monetized it. Yeah. Sometimes it's that small little tweak in your business that could take you through the roof. Facts. You know what I mean? Now yeah. you're still getting paid from cutting hair and doing YouTube. Yeah. That's dope, man. Yeah. Yeah. We don't got to go all the way to the drawing board and do something new every time. We can just maybe reinvent what we've been doing. Absolutely. You know, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of right ways to do things, a lot of wrong ways to do things. So, you know, mm -hmm. you know, if, I try to tell people, okay, this way is not working. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say give up. Don't give up on that. You just might not not be doing it correctly, or yeah. you're not you catering to your wrong audience. Because everything you do, there's an audience for it. Oh, you just got to sure. make sure you find it. <laughs> and, and like you said, sometimes you know it, it's just something else within the same industry. Like I said, I started out with the broker mentality, mm -hmm. but then decided to go ahead the wholesale route. We still right. in real estate, but it's just a little small tweet. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's hard. So even with that, man, like um. It's 2021 right now. I'm talking about real estate. Uh, can you give me a little bit of uh, insight on how the market is? The market is on fire. It's insane right now. The market is on fire. If you have a house and you're thinking about selling, stop thinking. Just sell it. Right. You know what I mean? There is a downside to selling in a hot market, though. Mm -hmm. You got to buy in a hot market. Exactly. And prices are ridiculous right now. You know, like... Prices are like 20 to 30 percent higher right. than they've ever been. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Homes that were selling for like 170 are going for like 210. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out when this so called real estate bubble is going to pop because I anticipated to pop, I don't know, a little while ago, but it's like it's still going. Yeah. Well, which kind of blew my mind is that thing was strong even during the pandemic. Right. I was like, yo, how y'all buying houses? Unemployment's through the roof. Like, where are y'all getting this money from? Exactly. You know, but people were still buying houses and, I mean, it's still like that right now. Yeah. You know, just now getting back to work, but houses are still flying off the market. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, it's I, like the supply and demand thing because I don't. it don't seem like it's a whole lot, but when something come open, they know they can put the price up high because mm -hmm. the competition is so much. The thing that's going to kill a lot of people, though, is the price you're buying at right now mm -hmm. when it does burst. <laughs> 
it's not going to be worth that anymore. Right. You just paid 210 and now your house is worth 140 Right. You know, we go through cycles where prices go up and down, but right now it's so elevated to buy right now. Right. I'm not trying to discourage anyone from buying because I believe in ownership. Right. But it is insane because you're going to pay the price in a few years. Right. You know, your value is not going to be there. All you can anticipate is it going back up. Or right. I just hope it does. Exactly. So what would be the benefit for who in this current climate will have? Get the best advantages. It would definitely be an investor. Yeah, for sure. That's what I was trying to lead to. Yeah. See, and, and it depends on who you're working with as an investor. Because if you're an investor buying off the MLS, you're still going through the same thing. You're right. still overpaying. But the only difference is you're doing it for the long term. You're not living in this property. You have other things. You have uh, deferred interest that you can do. You, you can go ahead and get deductions for your interest payments that you make on your property. You got deductions that you take off at tax times. Mm -hmm. All these type of write-offs. You're making money, so it's a cash flowing asset. You know, it's a lot mm -hmm. of positives, but at the same time, you are still buying in the hot market. But I right. mean, a lot of investors do. You got to yeah. buy, you know. Yeah. But the good thing is, when the market does crash, now you still got a rental. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And as we seen what happened in 08, if a lot of people remember, rent started going through the roof mm -hmm. because everybody knew, hey, these people can't own anymore. They right. got to rent. Exactly. So let's go ahead and raise the price. Yep. I mean, so many times. If you notice, like, rent is more than mortgages. All the time. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, not trying to give specific numbers, but I know what I pay for my mortgage. Right. And there's a rental property across the street. I talked to that guy. He pays $500 more Crazy. in rent than Crazy. I pay for a mortgage. Yeah. And my mortgage is high. Right. Because you know, I got in, although I am in real estate, I'm an investor and all that stuff, I got in at a bad interest rate. Right. So my mortgage is high. But mm -hmm. for him to be paying still Even more, I'm like, bro. Crazy. Insane. Yeah, man. So... Those are some things for people to think about, like, you know, um, investing, you know, having those rental properties. You can actually help change those type of things into, you know, generational wealth, helping yeah, that, absolutely. you know, that residual income coming in. Like, yeah. you can take advantage of the market. Yeah, I mean, it's something that will get paid no matter what because right. people need somewhere to live. Right. You know what I mean? And you can take advantage when the market's hot. You can raise the rents. And sometimes when the market's not hot but people need places to rent, you right. can still raise it. But Either way, it's income. Absolutely. So, Everything that I've learned recently came from YouTube. I mean, even down to real estate. I yeah. learned wholesaling from YouTube. I never bought a course that I actually applied. Right. Never had a mentor. And I'm not saying that to brag because, damn, I need a mentor. You know right, what I mean? Right. Even when you reach a certain level of success, you still need a mentor. Facts. But you can learn it from YouTube for free. Yeah, yeah. A whole lot of it. A whole lot of it. Like, I mean, I remember you talking about wholesaling and real estate. Man, I don't know. <laughs> Back when it was not cool. Ten years ago. I don't like... Bruh. I remember you talking about that a long time ago. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and the fact that you, uh, you know, not alone just talked about it, you actually put some footsteps towards it. You in it right now. You, you know what I'm saying? You actually doing this. Right. That's something commendable and respectable. You know what I'm saying? Sure. That's dope. You stuck to... You know what I'm saying? What what your thought was, what your interests were. So, right. and, and that's how you can uh, become successful in something and, and only continue to be more and more successful because it's a progressive thing. Facts. Appreciate so, it. Yeah, man, no doubt, man. That's dope. Uh, you know, because um, I was going to ask you, one of my questions was, so what gave you the courage to quit your uh, 9 to 5? But, you know, we know he got fired. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? No so, courage, my bag on that, dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't know about that. <laughs> hey, man, it was supposed to happen that way. Right. You know what I mean? You're exactly right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I did not do what I did, that would have never happened. I'd probably been complacent at that job still. And you may have been still doing it halfway. Yeah, absolutely. Man, so many great things happened from getting fired. You know, I lost my job. I lost my insurance and all that stuff to go with it. Right. Bro, I lost weight too. Right. I got in better shape. Right. Started making more money, more time with the family. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Helped me mentally. Right. It was definitely worth it. Yeah, that's, that's why we got to, uh, you know, when we have those, a rough time, something that happens out of the blue, you know, you got to understand this. This may be God pointing you into a direction you need to be mm -hmm. in. You know what I'm saying? He may be adjusting your focus. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, yeah, it, it, yeah. it was meant to be. Yeah. So, you know, don't beat yourself up if you got fired or something. And you know you were slacking. Hey, man, first of all, if I know I was slacking, what am I mad at my employer for? Right, you never heard me complain about that. You know what I'm saying? I knew it was me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you know I'm saying, and that's cool. Like, right. all right, I know what I've done wrong, I, but now I know what to do to right. get where I want to be. Absolutely. And that's the most important thing. You know what I'm saying? That's that's definitely what I feel people really, really hey. need to think about. Hey, you, you said uh, something that I was actually thinking while you were saying that. A lot of people, when bad things happen, mm -hmm. they're quick to blame the devil. Right. Yo, the devil let this happen. The devil. Yo, sometimes, I mean, if you read the Bible, it tells you nothing happens without God's permission. 
Right. So that happened to you for a reason. Right, right. Now, you may not understand it. You may not see it. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason behind it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, it. stay faithful. Mm -hmm. Stay committed. And stay consistent. Yeah. You'll see it on the other side. Exactly. Exactly. That's the problem. People don't want to see it. Something mm -hmm. happens. Hey, oh, bro, it's over. I'm saying they're throwing the towel in. You can't throw the towel in. You got to get up, man. Like, the L's ain't, the main losses, those learning opportunities. Wait, wait, they lessons. Yeah, lessons. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. I want to talk about, because you're, you're biracial. What is your yeah. ethnicity? Black and white. Black and white. That's what's up, man. Like, um, so with you being biracial, did you spend more time with the black side or the white side? It was kind of balanced. To be real, neither one. Um, um, my family was very secluded. Now talk um, about that. So we, we stayed to ourselves for the most part. Um, although both sides accepted um, like the white side accepted my dad being black and mm -hmm. vice versa. They didn't fully embrace it, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, I understand you're with him. I'll take that. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have any problems with it. He come over, I right, cool. Mm -hmm. But don't think everything going to be over. Everybody's hugging, kissing, family, high fives. Not, it's not that type of environment. Wow. You know, so, so when you're saying secluded, you're talking about just the immediate family. Like right. Mom, dad, so, brother, sister. It was just me, my mom, and my sister, for the most part. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, every now and then, a cousin would come over. Like, my family has been so separated. Bro, I don't even know, like, most of my cousins' middle names or nothing. It's you know crazy. Mean? I have none of their phone numbers. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm friends with them on Facebook. But even growing up, like I said, like, they'll come over. Like, mm -hmm. one of my cousins stayed with me for, like, a year or two. Mm -hmm. And then went back. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't even tell you where they live. I don't right. know nothing about them. You know what I'm saying? We That's weren't close. We, family events. Didn't go to that. Like, we had Christmas. We'll show up. But Pops couldn't come. Not he couldn't come. He didn't feel comfortable coming. Right. You know what I'm saying? Same thing on the black side. Like, we never been to no family reunions or nothing. So, the, the whole dynamic of the family relationship. And I know a lot of families aren't like this. You know, e even, even some are, a lot are. But that's why if I say I know a lot are, you know, yeah. for those reasons, you know, that the black side don't want to pull in the, the white right. the spouse. You know what I'm saying? And the white side is not taking in the black spouse. Right. You know what I mean? And, and that's what the division was. Now, where do you think that derived from? Like, is it they maybe felt like the other side didn't understand or? Uh, of course, everything comes from lack of communication. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. you're looking at my parents were born in the 60s. Mm -hmm. we, we know that's when the civil rights and everything was at its peak. Right, right. was going on right then. So there was a lot of people, you know, tension between both sides. So, and, and going into that, and then, you know, schools had just became, right, right, you right. know, desegregated. So, yeah. It, but it, now, but, but when you was young, we was past that for the most part, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm from the 80s, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, from the 80s. I'm just trying to get an understanding because I got some, I got biracial, like close, close family, like yeah. nieces, you know what I'm saying? Nephew, you know, are biracial. All right, now, so everything's taught to you though, right? Mm -hmm. So you got grandparents that were taught that we don't like black people. And and, mm -hmm. and the same thing on the other side. I don't want to make it one-sided. Right, right. So they put those impressions on their kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Obviously, the kids didn't all pick it up because my right. mom married a black dude. Right, right. But you still got the grandparents with those same sentiments, those same feelings. You know yeah. what I mean? It's going to be hard to go to family gatherings. Right. So it don't matter if it's 1960 or now 1980. Yeah. They still got the same thoughts. It's blended. Yeah. So there, there's no bringing it all together. Right. You feel me? So that's where that came from. That's where that energy came from. You right. know what I'm saying? And even just because there's grandkids, you know, some people open their eyes at that point. Okay, cool. We'll be more accepted. Nah, that's... Not what happened. Right, right. It's still the same thing. Now, all my grandparents are dead, so I, I'm not trying to speak on their behalf. But right. guaranteed, you know, like, my dad would be able to go to my mom's side. Right. Now, when he left, this nigga. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, you're going to hear something. You know what I'm saying? Something's going to be said. Right. You know, my dad got to fight with one of my uncles because something was said under his breath. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And things hit the wall. Got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, I get it, man. So, like, I right, so you guys were secluded. Mm -hmm. So kind of how how was uh do you feel like you was accepting like in like high school middle school how was those relationship were you did you go to like a black school mid school primarily white um so it was a mixture you okay. know what I mean? by the time I got to high school I went to three different high schools mm -hmm. just because they changed districts well we moved and then they changed districts okay. first high school I went to was kind of mixed second high school I went to definitely all black mm -hmm. um and then the third one. It started out mixed, but now it's defined as the white school. Right, right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? Um, just because it changed lines. Right. But 
So my crowd was hanging out with black kids. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We had a couple of white friends, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. People fail to realize no matter what I was born as, mm-hmm. society sees me as a black man. Facts. You feel me? You know what I mean? So Facts. I can go out here and tell people I'm black, they see me, they believe it. Right. I go out here and tell people I'm white, they see me, they're like, you're bugging. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, you just hit a point there. Yeah. You just hit a point there. Like, and so, do you feel some type of way if someone says that you're black? Nah. Okay, okay. I identify. <laughs> I identify. I identify more with the black side, you know what I'm saying? Just because of the way I was raised. And I hate to put, because I don't believe anything in life has a color, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. There's no color to music stuff, but I listen to what they call black music. I listen to rap, you know what I'm saying? I right. grew up on that, you know what I'm saying? I, right. We had black food, you know what I'm saying? My mom might have so been white, food. but she knew how to cook, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. She, she knew how to see She knew how to keep that black man. She, she you know what I'm saying? saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that's real talk. You know what I mean? So we, we had more black culture in our household. Right. You know what I mean? But I, I get offended on both sides. You know what I'm saying? As a black man, I hear somebody talking about white person. I'm like, hold up, bro. Right. Like, have you ever thought about this? And, and that's important. Yeah, and same thing on the other side, though. You hear somebody white talking about black. Oh, hold up, bro. Right. But, and then go in on that side. You know what yeah. Because I, I have both views, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day. Right. Whether society sees me as a white man or a mixed man, and I can't even know white man, but right. a mixed man, right. I know my side, you know what I'm saying, I know who I am. Right. You know what I'm saying, so. Absolutely. Yeah, man, it's, that's a that's a major point because, you know, I, I've heard this conversation before with people that are biracial, like, um, so if I, I call, if I call them black because I'm going to see you, I, I think you're a black dude, just light skinned, like me. Right. Like, both my parents are black, but I'm light. Right. Uh, some people would believe me if I said I was mixed, right? Right. But, you know, if I say that, if I call you black, you know, like, um, some people would get offended. Like, I'm not black, I'm mixed. I'm like, well, you know, I, I wouldn't know that. I'm just, like, right. saying, looking at you, yeah. you look like a black person. And you most likely not going to be treated like, you know, you're white. Because just, hey, man, you look like. Not at all. You know what I'm saying? A black dude. Cause, yeah. You know, and uh, even in my family, like, um, like uh, with my, like, I say I'm not gonna say exactly who, but like growing up, like initially, like the mixed uh, kids that used to, you know, come see their the black side. Yeah. But when they got like I don't know, like after like I don't know, nine, ten, something like that, I didn't really see them much anymore. They oh, right. they really didn't come around anymore. So I feel like you know, mm. you know, I, we lost con- connection a, a little bit, you yeah. know, with them, which I hate. Why do you um, think that is? I don't know. You think it was the parents? I mean, I, I don't, I don't see, I don't know. It's like, I'm like, yeah, I want to see my, um, I want to see my people, because also I think it's very important for them to understand their their black side and their white side. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and and I I know deep down when people look at them, they're not going to look at them as white. You know what I'm saying? They're going right. to look at them as black, so they need to understand what those type of um, how to deal with those type mm. of situations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um. So I, I really feel like people shouldn't separate, you know, uh, those cultures. They should join, have a good understanding of each other. And not alone that, you probably be able to help out, change the mindsets of uh, a lot of the older people from the yeah. black side, from the white side. And then that's only going to be, you know, help for later. You know yeah, what I'm saying? For sure. It's communication. Yeah, yeah, big time. That I think if you ask a person of a different color, you know, what issues do you have with this person? They're only going to regurgitate stuff they heard from somebody else. Exactly. Nine times out of ten. You know, there's no real reason they have, and most of the things they have are not valid. If you sit down and talk to somebody else from another, you're like, oh, wow. So you don't think this? Right. You know, we tend to marginalize, put everything together. You know, um, mm-hmm. if one person feels this way, now you're feeling every person of that race feels that way about you. And, and we can't do that. I nah. mean, yeah, we will magnify uh, a small percentage and try to say that's normal mm-hmm. and it's just not accurate nah. you know uh you know and we all know negativity gonna spread way more than positivity oh, absolutely. and we need to understand that's the scale that we're working with well that's real talk man um so we talked about that i'm trying to um i'm talking a lot yeah. are you yeah i feel like i'm talking a lot that's good you want some water nah. <laughs> <laughs> i said damn i don't think bro talked at all <laughs> No, nah, no, nah, we are, we both talking. Oh, we both okay. talking. You're you good. Sure. Let, get off. And also, you know what I'm saying? You're here to get your shit off. I am. You know what I'm saying? This is for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it ain't even about me. We, but we can collaborate and talk about some things, build on each right. other. But you know what I'm saying? This this your time. You know what I'm saying? So, they're definitely going to say, yo, your, your guest did not shut the hell up. You know? Nah, nah, nah. They, I'm sure you had more They're here for the guests. <laughs> they're here for the guests. You yeah. know what I'm saying? A lot of people are already, um, you know, they know what I'm thinking 
thinking about they because they they they've been following my brand. Facts. But you know, if I had some guests on the show, I want them to understand you know what they're talking about. You know, yeah. understand the things that we are liking, the differences that we may have, oh, and, yeah. and also like I can learn from you. You can learn from me, and you know what I'm saying like it's just go back so, and forth that way. So and yeah, that is true because when I listen to interviews and I hear the interviewer right asking all the questions, not really. Mm-hmm. Letting a person elaborate, you're like, damn, bro. All right, right. you gonna let them talk? Right, right, right. I just want to make sure I was. Oh yeah, man, it's all I... good. And then if you got a question for me, you know, you already asked questions too, so yeah. you know, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, because you know we have been friends for a while. You know, it's what been what a minute. For those who don't know, so it's been the, a minute. the vibe and the chemistry just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. It's been a minute. Like, like, dang. Back. Like when you think back, like it's, it's crazy. And even like even when you're talking about like friendships and um, you know. You no know, history that people have. There's there's different types of friends, you know, that you have. Now, also, like, even if I know some people feel some type of way when they don't speak to their friend on a daily basis or right. something like that, or you know, how often do I speak to this friend? Oh, they're probably not my real friend, but real friends are those who that you can come back to and it be organic and feel like it's the same if it's been a couple of days, talk or about it, a couple of months since y'all talked. Yeah, it feels like you guys just finished talking yesterday. Talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Like people got, um, you no know, people got lives. We got to understand and not take things uh, personal. And oh, also, yeah. if you're feeling some type of way, why aren't you saying something? Communication. Yeah, it always come back to that. Like. If you start to feel slighted or you feel like, okay, this person don't have, you know, time for me or I, I have, it seems like I'm the one who always reach out. So I'm not going to, you know, initiate a conversation. Yeah. You know, if you're feeling that way, you know, let the person know if they actually care. They'll make an effort. You they'll know say what I'm something back. Yeah. Right. They'll make we an had that issue. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we know. It. You know and, this, and, that's on, and that's something that, you know, you know, especially I feel like, you know, men got to get out of their own way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, thinking that, uh, you're, you're less than a man for or even telling someone that, okay, that made me feel a type of way. Right. That situation, to be re- honest, bro, that hurt my feelings. I ain't know how to deal with it, so I just didn't even talk to you for a while. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, those are real things, and we got to know how to really come in those spaces, move past those spaces, actually, you know, become better. And to be able to talk about it. Yeah. Right, right. That's very, very important, man. And I don't, I don't want nobody to lose sight of that, because... We need our brothers. You know what yeah, I'm saying? You know yeah, what I'm saying? We need sure. our brothers to, you know, continue to build off of. You know, I know everyone like to, you know, be on their own and all this good stuff. And yeah. that's all cool. But, right. you know, having some support, some backbone, someone you can talk to, you know. Uh, you know, It's a lot it's, easier. Yeah, it's a lot easier. It's right. a lot easier. But, yeah. I, mean, I think in everything we do, if people collaborated more, life would be a lot easier. But right. like you said, especially the, the men. They have that persona of, bro, I'm doing it on my own. Yeah. I don't need anybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'll show everybody once I do it. Right. Nah, because if you tell everybody now, y'all can cut time in half and maybe get to where you want a lot faster. Right. You know what yeah, I'm saying? For real. Or like you just talked about, period, just talking about your feelings. People don't want to talk about feelings. They don't want to be open. Right. But damn, how is somebody else supposed to know? Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then what's, what's true to you, like... Even when we went out, when we didn't talk for a little while, Mm -hmm. when you gave me your perspective, I'm like, okay, I get that. But this is how I saw it. And that was just as real. Right. Absolutely. And you're like, (laughs) yeah, that does make sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I totally get it. My bad, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's all you can say. Yeah. I messed up. I realized it. Mm -hmm. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Now that you say how you feel, because beforehand it was just like. This nigga bugging. Right. And you only thinking about it from your point of view, not realize, realize it's two sides of a coin. All the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, t- and also two things can be true. Yeah. Like, people got oh, to understand hey. that. Two things can be true. Like, the way you feel and the way the other person feels, both can be 100% accurate. So, I like to say truth is really a perspective thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because what's true to you is not true to somebody else. Right. I don't think... And people may disagree. I don't think there's anything in life that everybody agrees on. Even no, down no, to no. the small thing is we breathe oxygen. I'm sure there's somebody in the world like, no, actually what we do is, you know what I'm saying? There's going to be some weirdo hydrogen in the world. Right. Too. You know? Oh. <laughs> there's some weirdo in the world who's going to say something. So I don't think there's anything we all agree on. Yeah. And like you said, what's real to you is not real to the next person. You right. know what I'm saying? So maybe you need to tell them so they can see that. And be like, you know what? Yeah. That's not how I saw it. But I do. I understand what you're saying there. Yeah, I understand that. And um, and that's how you get the full picture. Because if you only stand so focused on how you feel about something, you're getting half of it. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We got understand both yeah. sides. We get the whole picture. Yeah. And that's the I think that's important for everyone to understand, to get the whole 
pick your own things. All relationships. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. Like, because you can have, you can let years go by, you end up, and then how about something happened to this person and you had no opportunity? Well, you had opportunity, you just didn't take it. There you go. You didn't take the opportunity to get it right. Mm -hmm. And now this person gone forever and then you got to deal with that. Right. And now, even if you don't have to deal with it, they might be going and they're going and you thinking it was this way the whole time. Right. And, won't and it right. wasn't even that. Yeah. Like, you know how many times people done probably done passed and we done had this whole outlook on something and it wasn't even from what they saw the in their vision. You know right. what I'm saying? It wasn't even the case. And then how about you find out when it's like too late for you guys to even build anymore? Like, dang, right. this person on their deathbed or, you know what I'm saying? Like, Man. What? Yeah, yeah. So we got same thing with children. I, I talk to parents real mm -hmm. quick. Same thing with your kids. Y'all need to have that communication. You need to talk. Being a parent, sometimes you feel you're in a perspective to be the authoritative figure. Right, right, right. I say it, it has to happen. You never know how your, your kids feel. I use this for an example because recently I was talking to one of my daughters. She was walking around with a sad face on. Mm -hmm. Well, a mean face. I'm like, yo, bro, every time I see you, right. you look angry. You, mm -hmm. you don't look happy. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And in this one particular situation, something had just happened. I'm like, yo, you, you can't do that. You got company over here. You need to be happy. Right. She was like, yo, so what? I'm supposed to hide how I really feel? You want right. me to hide my feelings? Right. And me being a parent at that time, I wasn't even trying to think about how she felt. Right. It was more like, yo, we got company. You better mm -hmm. smile, go around them and be mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. But not thinking how she feels like, yo, this is how I feel on the inside. Why should I have to hide it? Right. Because she doesn't understand, you know, like, we got company type thing. Right. So I had to take a step back, like, look at it from her perspective. Like, yo, maybe she really does have a point. She got a point. Maybe <laughs> I need to sit here and figure out, you know, why she feels this way so we can get to the bottom of that. Right. More than trying to cover it up and tell her, yo, go ahead and put up a front for people. Right. And that goes back to what your parents teach you. We teach kids certain things. Right. And they carry that into their adulthood. Absolutely. That's Can't just, put a Band-Aid on a bullet hole. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's just a minor situation, but... By me telling her to cover up the feelings and go back out there, mm -hmm. what if she said, I, and now that's her theory, every time I feel something, just cover it up and go yeah. back out there. And then guess what we're going to say as parents? Why didn't you tell me? Fact. Well, you told me to fuck. Right. Nigga, what you want? I was ready to talk about it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, so. it's all right. You know what I'm saying? And you're absolutely right. Because I've even even seen situations like that. And, and kids will really, really bring things into perspective for you. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, because they're really trying to understand, like, no, that's real. That's yeah. so real. Like, yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Sometimes when they ask the questions, you be like, yo, shut up. <laughs> you know, because that's a very good question and I don't have an answer right, right now. So yeah. you're going to listen to me. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to put this on the drawing board and I'm come back to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we're going to have to come back to it. I don't know. And also, it's all right to take kids you don't know. Yeah. It's also, also all right to tell anyone that you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. know. You, you know don't have to have an answer for everything. Right, right. Instead of telling somebody some bull. Oh, my God. Sometimes I'd rather much you tell me you don't know instead, instead of you telling me some bull. Right, or just keep rambling. I'm like, do you know? <laughs> now I'm more confused than before I asked. Right. Yeah, that's real, man. So many people do that, man, about anything. Yeah, and that that hurts me. Like that, that really, that really. Oh, so you just gonna rather than just saying you don't know, you gonna send me down this whole rabbit hole for right. no reason? I just sit here for forty five minutes listening to nothing. Yeah, yeah. No explanation or anything. Yeah, stop it. Yeah, stop it. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. You got your um. Your what's it called? A mom and a dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got a podcast. My wife and I. Okay. Um. We're not the most consistent at it, but we're definitely trying to change that. Uh -huh. But basically, you know what we do is just talk about life in general. Um. We want to try to give parenting tips because, you know, but we're still learning as we go through it. Right. You know what I mean? It's a never ending job, but right. definitely just talk about life in general. What people go through is being a married couple. You know, mm -hmm. my wife and I, I've been with her since I was 21. So I, mm -hmm. I didn't have that phase of going out there wild and out and stuff because I got with her and I became committed. I was a whole way before then. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we've been together for quite a long time to have a lot to talk about. Then we got the kids to talk about. So, right. you know what I mean? To stay together. Especially, and I hate to say this as a young black couple, because, mm -hmm. you know, black love, they, they look down on it. You know what I'm saying? They, they never think it's going to last. So to be young, black, and still together after 16 years, yeah, yeah it's kind of crazy. It's worth to be celebrated. Yeah, yeah for sure. But, you know, uh, you know you've got you you've been married for 16, 16 years? Yeah, we've been together 16. We've been married about 10, yep, going on 11. That's crazy. And then, you know, and there's a stigma that, you know, Black couple. Nah, we just celebrated 11. Hold on, let me say that before I... Let me get you that together right. 16 and married for 11. Yeah, we just celebrated 11. I had to get that right because I'll get killed when I go back home. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, I understand. Trust me. I mean, I lose track of that stuff. And and also, that's another thing, like, ladies, be be more empathetic. Because men, I'm sorry, we just... 
not good with dates for the most part. <laughs> Yo, like if, if we remember the date, that should be good enough. Right. Now you want to remember how long it's been too? Like that's that's a that's a lot. You're asking a lot. You gotta understand like all of us have things that our strengths and we have our weaknesses. Facts. Like and that's why we work well together in uh, in couples. Like yeah. so, you know, don't don't beat your man down. Don't think he's uh you know, he don't he loves you any less cause he can't keep up with a date. It's just not it. Right. A lot of things are just not in our makeup. You know to, what I'm saying? Right. Like, it's it's just not in our makeup to I really. I tell my wife that all the time. Yeah, yeah. And, and we got to be more, you know, ladies got to be more compassionate about that. Because, you know, so a lot of things are just not in your makeup that we know. We got to just be, you know, empathetic about and just move move on. For like, sure. I don't think you love me any less. That's just not, you know, what you're good that's at. That's not what you, right. You know Come what I'm saying? On, so, you know, we got to remember that. For real, for real. Yeah. So, you know, and, um. I know there's a, you know, we need to celebrate, you know, those, of course, those black relationships because, and also break this, uh, stigma you so yeah, about. yeah, the stigma that, you know, it, this black love don't, don't last because it does, you know it what I'm does. saying? My parents been like together like 40 years, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, and still, and still kicking and, and, and loving each other um, to this end. Yeah. And, um, you know, all my homies, um, you know what I'm saying? They, they have families, they're there with their wives, you know. Every single one, you right. know what I'm saying? Long like, term, yeah, long term. You yeah. know, like, and I'm like, and that's another thing with this whole social media thing. These posts that people be saying and stuff on Facebook is just not reality because I see more, uh, you know, you no know, men and women working together in families than I see not. Now, although my my vision is not the uh, you know the standard because everyone sees something different, different right? You know what I'm saying? Like I understand that, but also we gotta you know be understanding. Like okay, this type of thing exists because hey man, I just I saw from my perspective that's yours, but mm -hmm. let's still look at the whole picture. Let's not say this is the majority because right. I don't want to say my situation is the majority, and you shouldn't say yours because really I, I don't I don't know how we can really mm -hmm. <laughs> know. Right. But see, you know the problem saying? is, it's what's popularized. Right, right, exactly. And unfortunately, it's the short-term relationships. It's mm -hmm. the men being dogs and females right, being hoes. Right, right you yeah. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately. Yeah. That's what's community. talked about, yeah. You know what I'm saying? With, bro, and this is bringing to the race, and I ain't trying to beat a dead horse. But it's all good. Yo, know, when it comes to the race, there's so many things that I feel we do in our culture that we should not do. You right. You know what I'm saying? You hear a person that is black talking proper, what do they say? They say you're talking white. All, Which is crazy. It blows my mind. Makes no sense. If you tell that to a kid, my my oldest, she talks it very proper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she. Hey, I I gotta go put on my clothing, mm -hmm. and I laugh and joke about it all the time, but not to make her not talk that way. I'm like, yo, you talk so proper. I don't say you're talking white. Right. I say yo, you're talking so proper. You know what right. I'm saying? But that's what it is. Yeah, and I appreciate that. But you know how many times other black kids probably feel some type of way when man, why are you talking white? Now they feel like, well, now I need to dumb it down. Now I need to sling it right. or something. And yeah, it, you it's don't. sad. Yeah. First of all, how does a speech have a race? Right. How do you talk white? Exactly. You know what I mean? Or you know, it, and vice versa when they say you're talking black. Yeah, how do you talk black? Like, what do you mean? So you're trying to say all black people talk with that nonsense exactly. like that? Or you know what I'm saying? Or, or talk in, in slang terms? You know what I'm it saying? It blows my mind, bro. Snoop, how, talk, how Snoop talk? You think all black people walk around talking about for shizzle my nizzle? You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, like, some white people do. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just so crazy. It it's, it's funny, but it's not funny when you can tell, like, a certain culture hasn't been around another culture. Right. And, and, they, and they're trying their best to not offend you, but blend in at the same time. Right. I right. used to have this boss. I see him talk to the white people. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you? He mm -hmm. see me, is throw the peace sign. Crazy. Every time. I'm like, bruh, <laughs> yo, <laughs> I, I should be offended. I feel like I probably you, should. Yeah. He was a white dude? Yeah. That is crazy. Every bro. single time, bro. And he's my boss, my manager, you know, pound his chest and throw the peace sign. But he see the white people, it was a wave every time. I was like, hmm. But, oh, ah, that's crazy. But see, I, it's one of those thin lines, though, you know what I mean? It's to where, was he trying to be offensive or was he just trying to embrace me in a way that he thought that's what I was used to? Yeah. Which is bordering the line of yeah, kind that, of racist. Yeah, that's still racist, but. It all depends on, you know, his background. Maybe he, I don't know if he grew up around a bunch of black people and he, I don't really know black people to do the. No, I, I've never seen it. Like, see, that's why I think it's a stereotypical thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think that is more so fall into that stereotype thing. And I'm like, look, dude, you need to relax. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Need to relax. Like, you, you, you think that's me? I, what's behind that, that right. thought process? You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I agree with you there for sure. And, and you know, it, it just had me feeling some type of way in that particular situation. Right. But, you know, once again, it, in our culture, I think it's just 
things we need to stop doing, stop putting labels on to make us feel inferior, right? Especially to another race. You know what I mean? Exactly. You you don't act white. You got good credit. Like, oh damn, you got white people credit, huh? Oh man, please what don't say that. What you mean? That's ridiculous. Right. Like, this is crazy. Like we gotta we gotta really 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 stop that. Now, I've never been one to say that stuff, but it did make me cringe when I heard it. Right. Like, so you've heard it, though? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so it, it makes, especially at a young age, because we know young people are very impressionable. Right. Make them feel that there is a particular race that is better than you, even though we know there's not. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But we keep that thought alive in society. White people probably do the same to some of that. Not all white people, but right. some white people do the same with their kids. You know what I'm yeah. saying? you know you're better because this or this and that, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. And we do the same thing with ours by bringing us down. Why you acting white? Why you, right. you yeah, shouldn't yeah. do that, bro? Or calling our, um, our boys soft when they, you know, if, if, if he's crying about something, certain hurt his feelings. Right. You no, know, we shouldn't say that he's soft for that. You know, I even think men don't cry. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, men can have emotions too. They can express those emotions and that's cool. You know what I'm saying? We got to yeah. be able to help teach our kids how to deal with their emotions and the only way you can really deal with it if you allow it to come out. Yeah, yeah, for no, sure. It's not dealing with it, keeping it in. Right. You know what I mean? So um, I think that's major, major. Uh, it's, it's a lot to learn from, man. But, you know, a lot of the stuff can come from just being conditioned, um, being around, hearing this type of stuff. So conversations like this, we can help change a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? yeah, for sure. The conversations have to be had. Communication, once mm-hmm. again, though. Yeah. Almost everything boils down to communication. Yeah. So my, my oldest daughter just started... Letting her talk to boys. Okay. How old is she now? She's 12. She's about to be 13. Okay, 12. Okay. 13, two months. Wow. You about to have a teenager. Bro, mind blown. But, so, she, she, this one little boy, she like, I was like, all right, you can talk to him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, I know kids are going to be kids. I remember when I was young how I used to talk and how I used to act. Of course. So, I I try to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. At the same time, to mold her, to let her know that. Who you are and what you're really worth. Right. You feel me? So this little boy, and I know they're just talking and joking, mm-hmm. called her a bitch. Whoa. He was he was like, bitch, you're crazy. I know you're saying get in a playful manner, but you're not about to call my daughter a bitch. Not at all. Because I'm not about to put this in her head that it's okay, yeah, even it's in acceptable. the joking manner. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. not acceptable in no type of way. Right. You know, and so many people, I mean, growing up, I called plenty of females that. Mm-hmm. Females call each other that. Yeah. So now it's in their head, this is okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not about to let that happen with them. You know what I mean? Right, right. And, and I told her, like, yo, either you're not talking to him anymore or you want to let him know. Right. Like, you know, this is what it is. Or I'm going to let him know. Right, she right. She's like, no, 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 no. Don't you do it. I was like, all right. Mm-hmm. So she told him, look, my parents didn't raise me to be called this or any other name outside right. of what they named me. Right. So if we're going to talk. You can't do it again. Right. And at first he was like, all right, cool. You know, mm-hmm. I was just joking. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Before, a couple of days ago, did, it, did again. it again. He was like, and she was like, yo, he did it again. And he was like, yo, I, I didn't, I didn't say that. And even if I did, I just can't joke with you. That's not how we joke though, bro. Yeah. That's not, that's not a joking matter. You know what I'm saying? So tell me how you feel about this. I brought that up to bring this up. I wanted to handle it different than what my wife wanted to do. Okay. I wanted to bring fire to his ass. I was like, yo, give me the phone. Mm-hmm. I, I'm about to jump on here and. And for this dude, like, yo, that's not how you talk to her. She was mm-hmm. like, don't do that. My wife thought was like, don't do that. Mm-hmm. Maybe he hasn't had a role model in his life to teach him. That's not how you talk to women. Or that's not how you joke around with somebody that you like. His dad might say that. You know what I mean? Career. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If his dad's in the picture. I, right. I don't know that. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, and it's sad that we got to say that, but mm-hmm. th- that I mean, that's, that's society. Yeah. So... I haven't said anything to him, but it had me thinking, like, dang, what, would I have been causing more damage? Jumping on the phone, yelling, cussing if cuss words came out. I probably want to cuss because that's somebody else's kid. I ain't mm-hmm. stupid. Being aggressive to let him know, don't talk to my daughter like that. Or should I take my wife's approach? Hey, you know, mm-hmm. let's sit down. Look, look, brother, I understand you're joking and stuff, but this is not how we do it. You know what I'm saying? Which effect would have a bigger impact and which one would have more damage? Uh... Maybe somewhere in the middle, man, there, because I agree with what your wife was saying, because if you go in there, you know, yelling and screaming, it's going to be counterproductive. Mm-hmm. You know, um, also, like, this little kid might just go in the shell. He might just hang up. You know, you're not, you're not even get your message across. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Uh, you know, but, you know, you have a, you know, have a conversation with him, uh, you know, try to maybe find out, like, okay, why do you think this is okay? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um 
help me understand why you think it's okay to call a female a bitch. Uh, also, I want to talk about, um, you know, what you got on here. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dang, I'm hitting the mic. Yeah, so I want to talk about another thing that I started doing with my wife. We started doing a little t-shirt brand. Mm -hmm. Well, it's more than t-shirts. Mm -hmm. um, we do a little clothing line, Trinity Ave, Trinity Ave 87. The reason Dope. we named it Trinity Ave is because that's the first apartment we moved in together. It was off Trinity Ave. Oh. Right back. So let's take it back to the roots. Yeah. And we threw 87 in there because of our daughter's uh, birth month, 8 and 7. You know, mm -hmm. August and July. So... It all makes sense for us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just something we got into for fun at first. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just started making shirts here and there. Mm -hmm. It's actually been taking off, doing pretty well. Dope. Way better than I thought. Mm -hmm. And it's just one of those things to have in your belt. You know, like yeah. we were talking about at the beginning of the show, you never know what's going to happen. Now I got another skill set I can always use to generate exactly. money. Exactly. You know exactly. I mean? Yeah, that's so. dope, man. Y'all got your own, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I've seen you create a whole bunch of different designs. So, you know what yeah. I'm saying? That's, that's hardcore, man. Like, so, you know, uh, how can they find what you do? So, uh, TrinityAve87.com. Definitely find us up there. Um, actually, it's just TrinityAve.com. I think I threw the 87 in there for no reason. Okay. But um, TrinityAve.com. You know what I'm saying? You can find that right here. You know what I'm saying? Y'all guys check it out and, uh, you know, do your thing, man. He been doing his thing, so follow the movement. And that's, I love the come from the roots thing because I was thinking about what the hell is Trinity Ave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where the hell did they get that from? Like, I'm like, dude, he just pulled this out of the air? Where does right. it come from? But now that you say that, yo, the meaning is dope. I yo, we all got to start from somewhere. Right. We all got to start from somewhere. And also understanding where you're from, and, um, that's a big part of, you know, helping you get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's dope, man. That's dope. So, if y'all been paying attention, we talked about real estate. Now we're talking about clothing. We're obviously doing podcasting. We also did music and beats and stuff. You heard the intro. You know who did the intro. And the man, point everything. behind that is don't box yourself into one thing. There's multiple different streams out here. Yeah. You don't have to go be an expert at everything. You take one thing, you learn it, you master it, and move on to something else. Now you got that one still working for you while you're learning something else. That's vital, man. Yeah. Don't, don't be afraid to try something new. And if you got a passion in it, Try it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we'll do better if we do something that we have passion in. Right. We have more effort in it. And also, you enjoy it. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, I know people that had careers and worked there for years, 20 years, and hated their job. Yeah. You know, and that's, and that's just something horrible mentally. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? So, you know, do something that you love. And then if you can turn that something that you love into something that you can, that equates into a financial gain, mm -hmm. why not? You know what I'm saying? That's how you reach the highest point, man. Absolutely. Straight up. So, yo, man, I definitely appreciate you building with me today. Yes, sir. You're going to have to come back. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, um, because there's so much more we got to talk about, man. Oh, man so we ain't scratched the door. Wait, we ain't scratched the surface at all. Yeah. At all. So, yeah, man, uh, you got an uh, Instagram or anything they can follow? Uh, Yeah, yeah, I got quite a few, but um, we'll just keep it simple. We can Follow us at TrinityAv87. Um, you can catch out our, our new gear as we put it out. We do shirts. We do uh, custom glassware. We do a lot of different things, man. Nope. Um, try to take it above just what everybody else is doing. We do stickers, business cards, websites. Reach out to us. You know, we we'll definitely take care of you. Um, but yeah, trinityav 87com Trinity Ave on Instagram. Uh, Trinity Ave on TikTok. Definitely follow us. And you know, next time we'll talk about a few other things that we do, man. Um, cause yeah, I'll man. be here forever talking about stuff we involved in. Yeah, man, for sure, man. Until next time, y'all guys hold it down. Don't let it hold you. Peace. Peace. The Highest Point Podcast.